my earliest memories of carnival was uh, my mother. Um, she was involved with a, a whole little crew of West Indians who settled in Liverpool eight and started this Caribbean centre thing. So we'd be out of town playing, sitting in a field all day eating sweets while they played cricket, come back and they used that money to set the Caribbean up and that's when the carnival started. <laughs> smell the barbecues because there was a number of people doing the foods that were there. When carnival was coming round I knew that I'd be doing some sort of food. And I had a, I also had a mobile catering uh, vehicle which was a converted ambulance and I would use that on the streets for people who were walking past they could buy from there. I used to do some jerk chicken, rice, fried dumplings. A lot of people would t turn up that sometimes there was nowhere for people to park their cars, they had to park further away because that's how, how busy it was. People just come even from Leeds, Manchester to our carnival. because it brought the whole community together and it brought even people from outside the community, even from other black communities throughout the England, you know, like steel bands and stuff like that and sound systems. So it was, a, it was a really awakening, if you could call it, as a youngster, you know. I brought artists from Jamaica, Super Morris and another singer named Jigsaw and they came and performed when you talk about the sound system, you have the man who plays the music, so you call him the selector. Then you have maybe the main DJ, and sometimes you have a mixer as well, so you have a selector, a mixer, and a DJ. The reason why they used big boxes was for more, mainly for the bass line, and the bass, it just rumble. You can hear it blocks away, you know? So when the session was on, just the sound, you might not even want to go, but you hear the music and you end up going home getting ready for, to go to the dance, you know. The first buzz when your new carnival was really on its way was when you'd be walking down more grey streets and you'll see the, the stage getting put up or the tents getting put up and then you'd be go going straight back to your mates like the tents are going up, the stage is going up and then that's when you know the carnival's on its way. Carnival night, the sound systems would be built, uh, set up and your chest would be rattling. And I mean your chest would be rattling with the bass. And I'd just sit there or stand there and just watch the DJs just selecting tunes, the MCs would be on the mic. And, and even from that age I was like, I want some of this. I need to be part of this. Like every carnival seems to have this incredible weather, incre incredible atmosphere, incredible vibe. Like the legendary Shadow and his incredible um, costumes. I mean, they were more than costumes. They were like, almost like film sets. Do you know what I mean? Like one year, they'd be a 50p piece, like the full 50p piece sitting in the middle. Next year, be the hunchback with everything that goes with it. One time he had like, a, um, it was like a roller boot that he drove. So it was like a roller boot, but it was a car sized roller boot. Watching the floats as a kid, and it seemed at that time that the floats just never seemed to end. So carnival, um, so yeah, the costumes were a massive part of carnival. So obviously you had the parade. They always come with the Caribbean vibe with the feathers and the sequins and, you know, the girls with the little, as we see now in the Caribbean islands, you know, the little e-tarts and stuff on and the hairdressers. So that was definitely something that played a massive part to, to resonate that it was one of the main floats. And if you was picked to go on that float, it was like, you were big, do you know what I mean? Me and Arthur I were called the Rainbow Sisters. We were making like dancers up on the corner and then um, standing outside the shop with like buskers. <laughs> so we'd have a little hat on the floor trying to save money um, and just make a dance to like the Roses Are Red and 
there'd be certain tunes that people used to know that was a tune so we'd go right we're making a tune up to that today and there was one time he's on at outside Danny's shop if he was a community show or like Larks in the Park, you'd see us have a little slot in all of them shows. And you used to have a presentation after the carnival and you'd get your little trophy and feel like you was a proper celebrity. It was amazing. But that little community vibe used to get all like, it was inspirational to like the young and up and coming dancers, if that makes sense. No community that had the love that we had in Toxton. <laughs>